name's Kelly and I'm the community relationships and volunteer manager, and I'm part of the team here at Shared Hope International. On behalf of the entire team, we wanted to say welcome and thank you for joining us for this episode of our internet safety series. Our hope is that this series will provide you tools that empower you to protect the kids in your life and stop online child sex trafficking before it ever happens. In this episode, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about my experience posing as a 15-year-old girl online. It all started when Shared Hope's founder, former Congresswoman Linda Smith, asked me to make a resource for parents explaining popular apps, how they worked, how kids were using them, and unfortunately, how predators were using them. Concerned parents were always asking us about apps like TikTok and Snapchat, and I was really excited to be able to point them toward a resource that would empower them to make a more informed decision about the apps their kids were using. I started off this project by reaching out to police officers and teenagers, colleagues and advocates around the country to compile a list of apps that were popular um, both among teens and predators. Then, since I wasn't familiar with all the apps on the list, I downloaded each app and created a profile. I really wanted our data to be accurate, and I didn't think the kids I would be talking to about their experiences online would be as honest with Kelly, the internet safety researcher, as they would be with Kelly, the high school freshman. So that's who I became. After I created these profiles, I uploaded an obscured picture of my face, which made me look younger, posted a public message saying I was new to the app and wanted tips on how to use it, and I waited for a response. Now, I wanna be clear, I'm a millennial. I grew up with AOL and MySpace and even the early days of Facebook. I've definitely had my fair share of unsettling interactions online. But my previous experience as a teen on the internet could have never prepared me for what would happen next. Within minutes, my inboxes were flooded with messages from men, middle-aged men, some simply saying hello or asking what I would like to know about the app, others asking for photos of me in my jammies, my bra, or worse. And still, there were dozens more sending pornography or pictures of their own genitalia, oftentimes asking me to describe how the images made me feel. My mind was reeling. I was angry. These men had no idea they were chatting with an adult. They thought they were messaging a 15-year-old girl. If these messages were shocking and disturbing to me, a grown woman whose job it is to teach people about child sex trafficking, how would these make a real teenager feel? Almost immediately, I started to recognize the concepts I teach about every day, appearing friendly and familiar, developing trust, isolating from friends and family. These men were trying to groom me. It was at this point that I realized that I needed to step back. Although I recognized that what I was learning was extremely valuable, I also knew going into this research, it was never my intention to catch a predator. I had no idea what I was doing and I needed the help and wisdom of law enforcement professionals. After taking time to speak with local police officers, a tech industry professional, and the rest of the Shared Hope team, we decided we'd proceed with the research as planned. As I encountered online predators, I would report their accounts to the apps and to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's cyber tip line. If I recognized particularly predatory behavior or clear signs of grooming, I would engage in innocent conversation with them. I would never set any bait or lead the conversation in any way. I would simply respond to the questions they were asking. Now, I won't lie, this research was extremely difficult. During the next few weeks, I would speak with hundreds of pedophiles, predators, and sex traffickers. Admittedly, some were more convincing than others, but they all had the same goal, to groom and sexually exploit me. During that time, I would be invited to private chat rooms where predators would discuss incest and pedophilia. I would be exposed to dozens of images of hardcore, violent pornography, sometimes even depicting rape. 
I would be offered money and gifts in exchange for sexual images or favors. And believe it or not, I would on several occasions be begged to step out of my fictional high school geometry class to take a picture of my body for particularly persistent predators. Remember, none of this occurred on the dark web or classified sites. I was having these interactions on apps popular among teenagers. The reason I decided to share my experience with you is not to freak you out. After all, we are shared hope, we're not shared panic. We don't want you to feel like you need to take a hammer to your kids' devices. The reason we're sharing this with you is to be transparent with you about how incredibly important it is to prepare and talk to your kids about making safe choices on the internet. If you have a younger child in your life who's still being introduced to the internet and online gaming and social media, know that there are precautions you can take to protect them against predators and arm them with the knowledge to keep themselves safe. If you have a teenager who's been using the internet for a while, unfortunately, chances are they've already encountered some of these predators. But more likely than not, they've recognized and blocked them. To be completely candid, I've yet to meet a teenager who was shocked by my experience. In fact, many of them seem utterly unfazed and will share their own similar stories with me once they hear mine. This generation has grown up with the internet and know much more than we think they do about how predators work. But that does not mean they don't need our support, guidance, and even protection. Now more than ever, kids from toddlers to teens need parents and trusted adults to initiate conversations about internet safety. They need to know they have a safe adult to go to if they come across something scary or disturbing while they're on their favorite app or even doing homework. The good news, we're here to help. Shared Hope International has developed a wide array of free downloadable resources to inform and guide parents as you navigate these tough yet vital conversations with the kids in your life. From sexting to gaming to parental control options, Shared Hope has got you covered. To access all of these free resources and the apps to watch for info sheet we created from this research, you can visit sharedhope.org slash internet safety. Thank you for joining us and for watching this episode of our internet safety series. I'm Kelly and from all of us here at Shared Hope International, we hope you got some great takeaways today and feel more equipped to protect and support the kids in your life. See you next time. Oh,